Hi, this is a spontaneous um, chat with Gordon Gobsmacker calling again and Angie here after a lovely day with Charmaine and Paul and my son and out in the garden and uh, uh, Gordon's been out in the fields. But so we're just catch, we're just having a little touch base again. We don't know each other very well at all. I'm just getting to know a bit more about Gordon, but there's plenty that we've observed uh, parallel over the years. So I just was uh, mentioning, we've got two subjects I want to cover, and this might be a brief, we probably won't go an hour, but the first subject I asked Gordon about was the thing about being scammed with Ponzi schemes. Um, and uh, I was talking about whether to go public on the person that recruited myself and one of my sons into a cryptocurrency club um, where we weren't equipped to uh, to know how to draw down rewards. And then when we went to, the company kept collapsing and reforming under a different name. And then uh, we haven't been able to withdraw our funds. And I, I have said I'm going to go ahead and expose this person uh, who, who presented herself as an ex-police surgeon, they call it, a, a medical doctor attached to the police force. This was how she introduced herself to me in 2015 and then currently says she's a consultant in a hospital over an addictions unit and her duties include going into a prison I don't know, once a week prescribing for prisoners with addiction issues. It sounded all very plausible to me, but just with hindsight, I'm saying it's interesting that over seven years cyber friendship, um, she never wanted to show her face too bad. And uh, and she she never gave me her address. She, you know, I had a couple of three month stints offline and, she, you know, she never wrote to me and uh, just a lot of red flags. So I was just kind of half wanting to give into my usual behavior, which is when somebody rips me off, I let it go. I just kind of rage and rant internally and then walk away. But this time I think I'm going to try and discipline myself to um, to just go a little, you know, just see if there's anybody else out there um, that is in the same position. And um you know, just to find out who this woman is. Has she, Gordon seems to think I might have been fooled as to somebody being sent in with a fake backstory. And then you were going to talk about um, the Zim uh, and other scams that went down um, in your experience and the air hostess, you were going to tell me, to tell us yeah. a little bit. Well, first of all, can I just say, Angela, um, Again, this is not pre-recorded. This is not pre-edited. You met Sabine, you met Brenda. You've been involved in a whole bunch of stuff right the way through the years. I am here tonight to tell you that you are a beautiful soul that is innocent of being uh, taken advantage of, shall we say. I'm not going to use the AB word because that's a completely different sphere entirely, but you have been taken advantage of by a whole bunch of state apparatchiks and state media. I lived on Finchley Road, Hampstead. I can name you the addresses Paul McGann, Joe McGann, McGann Willard. I used to drink coffee with him on a certain cafe bar that's still there, West End Lane. I used to drive up and down West End Lane on a Sunday morning, dreaming on a Sunday afternoon when I first came to London. Because I came from Stornoway and I thought, oh, this is good. I'm driving up and down West End Lane, stoned out my tits. Ruth Ellis, the last woman killed where she shot her boyfriend outside a pub. That's all on West End Lane. But anyway, uh, yeah. With regards to this woman that can seem she can go into fucking prisons, and prescribe drugs for anybody. I would say that even CSI Gil Grissom and the top cop shows in America, yeah, they couldn't get away with that. So I would obviously say that I think she lied. And I do believe that she lied. And it's like I said, I met Belinda, I met Sabine, I met you. I think you were genuine. So I think I've been a bit of a crocodile Dundee. But yeah, well, yeah, you have, but you're sincere. 
You're a, you're a sincere bloody heart. You're, you're, you're true. Yeah. And this is what they do. This is why they send in the bloody shills and the fucking muppets. Drag away. Listen, have you ever seen, have you ever caught lobsters, right? See, when you catch a whole bunch of lobsters in a bucket, doesn't matter the big beside the bucket. See, when one gets to the top, the other will fucking climb onto it and drag it back down into the bucket. That's what happens to truth tellers, realistically, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's what they do. But hey, if they've got a big following, I've been them. decimated. I've been decimated online. It's, it's, you know, maybe a bit masochistic for me to keep carrying on because I. Not really. Well, I could feel, I, good. I could feel McConnell. Yeah. I'm, respons- I'm responsible for Phil McConnell. Phil McConnell, the biggest lying fuck up in the history of the internet. This is why everything that ever happened to Eagle Danger is gone, done, dusted. But if you go on and type Phil McConnell, Able Danger, and Gobsmack, you'll find one show from the 19th of the first 2019. For some reason, Mossad, the establishment, have left that video up there. You'll find me there. That's a right. true story. No, I did. I followed him and um, David Hawkins, and I know you featured a lot. I, I used to listen, and, and that's why I, I was surprised when that's who you turned out to be, because I just was kind of instinctively drawn to you, not knowing who you were or what your story was, you know? So it, it's God moves in mysterious ways. And sometimes when I've been naive, I, I can't, say I regret it because my naivety gave me entrance yeah, into do, do, inner that, sanctums yeah, and that's then it's, that's, that's God giving you a high five yeah yeah because I would literally it's like had, it, it's happened to me a million times over as well. yeah and exactly, I stayed in but, I, I stayed in Belinda's twice once for five days and once uh-huh. for two days off of the top of Islington Highbury yeah and um mm-hmm. And I started, to, I did start to feel like mm, something's a bit off here, you know, and I still have a soft spot for Sabine, even though there's evidence, you know, linking the two of them to a lot of questionable, you know, like having paedophiles in their inner circle yeah. and, and running a thing <clears throat> called options, not adoptions, something Sorry, like that. Sorry, hang on. Oh, I'm just, listen, guys, there's not enough light in the camera, but. I looked at Sabine and Brenda in the eye, and they could. You mean Belinda? Me back. You mean Belinda? Yeah, Belinda and Sabine. And I tell know me, Sabine, and I know a whole bunch of the rest of them. But let's not even mention. Listen, we're talking about the fucking state apparatus here. Yeah, I don't want to be. I don't want that, to be gossip. Yeah, but I still. No, no, we're not gossips. No. The one that you stayed with. The one that you stayed with. If anybody goes and googles this, you will find that there's been a whole bunch of other. Uh, Chewed up fodder, shall we say? Yeah, and I, I was yeah. told that she was at one point number three in MI5. When I met her, nah, she couldn't even look at me in the eye. She was nobody in MI5. I went to MI6. Listen, Angela, do you want to hear a stupid story? This is again, guys, this is a true story on behalf of God. I walked into Peter Hayne's office. Peter Hayne used to be the MP for me. I walked into his office one day with a hat and a big brown backpack. And I says to Peter Hayden, hey, Peter, I'm a Muslim. Boom, you're dead. He shot himself. He got me an interview with MI6 within two weeks, and they did come and interview me. Unfortunately, they wouldn't agree to my pair terms, and the bastards didn't hire me, even though I did tell them about a whole bunch of Islamic stuff to do with a 19 code based on the Quran that Saddam Hussein didn't know, and most of the fucking Muslims don't know about what. We'll save that for a later story. And that's a true story. I asked him for a fucking decent paying job and an insurance policy in case I got killed so I could put my children through college. But they didn't come back to me. So go figure what the state thinks about that. But Peter Hain, yeah, he'll never... How do you it. spell his last name? Is it H-A-I-N-E-S? Yeah, it's H-A-I-N. He used to put... Pa- back in 1973, he was throwing tax out on the fucking rugby fields of Griffin. Google anti-apartheid. His mummy and daddy are Scottish. Right. Again, like I said, this is true. Yeah. If you want the dates and the times, Google me. I'm not no, no, I either. believe you. I believe you. I, I just want to ask you, am I so am I still in a bit of cognitive dissonance about Sabine? She's out of prison uh, now. She's yeah, banned from England. No, no, She's Angela, living in- Angela, 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 Angela. Listen. You 
Charmaine, and all the other good souls that listen to this channel that have been victim or survivor to any kind of malice, bad practice, then know that your soul is not responsible. Know that what you have done is God giving you insight to wake the fuck up and tell the truth about whatever's going to happen to you next, whatever yeah. it may be, yeah? Yeah, well, it's, yeah. yeah taking it's... a strength from that. That's what God does. He puts us through every single exercise for a different reason. Me, I was scum. I went to bar school. I used to have the bounce beach balls. I used to have little buckets up and beat my hands with sticks. And eh. anyway, that didn't happen. But yes, it fucking did. So, so I, I, I fell. I fell for the Zim scam. I didn't fall too hard. I just bought some for I don't know thirty six quid or something. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I fell. I fell for it. So what was your air hostess story, or do you, have you moved on from that? No, 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 no. When the whole fucking Zim shit started, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, Phil McConnell, what the fuck are you doing? Because Phil McConnell started out telling the truth. Yeah, he did. And, yeah. And then after, like, when after fucking, what, in Wales, he went fucking completely de -lally. He went off the fucking script. He went fucking na, 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 na. But do you know why I know that happened? Is because... I met a couple of Mormons from Utah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, and you said that he got I, infiltrated. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he, there, he, there was he, another. There was another he, theory that Annette was MI five. What do you think about that, Denise? Angela, do you want me to tell you a true story again? And I can bring one of my oldest and bestest friends to family owned Area Fifty One. I mentioned him to her before because she was a big part of Able Danger. My daughter says to me, Dad, Phil McConnell, gatekeeper, Denise, MI6. And that was the first night she heard the show. And that was back in 2013. Wow. But I didn't trust my daughter's intuition. I went for glory and look what happened. I closed down the whole fucking network. Wow. Because they wow. killed Greg Haller. Greg Haller got shot to death in his fucking kitchen because of stuff that... <clears throat> hey! The state don't own your children, which they don't, by the way, but you don't go with guns to get them back. And Phil McConnell, <laughs> lock and load, Phil McConnell was drawing swords, Phil McConnell was saying, yeah, 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 use unnecessary force. See, that's an American thing, because that, they... I, I don't know, Angela, it's not. It's a universal thing. You don't kill anybody for anything, for God's sake. I, no. I agree, but Rupert Quaintance ended up in jail as well. Because he had that American mindset, like his family are all gun carrying, you know, it's part of their culture to, to be armed. So they. Angela, it says, it says in God's Bible, right? If anybody comes to take your life, you can do whatever you want. It's in the British Constitution, 1668, 1689, too. Okay? It's still there in the British Constitution. Although Tony Blair, Boris Johnson, and all these other cunts are getting to be fucking idiots, they're not going to fucking admit to it. But it's there, and it is there. I can walk down the street tomorrow carrying a bow and arrow set, and do you know what? The law can't touch me. The law yeah. can't touch me because it's in the fucking constitution. But yeah. you're right, girl. Let's not even go there because this is like a bigger subject than we've got. All right, just tell me the air hostess story, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Uh -huh. Well, the air hostess story is basically pretty simple. After Phil McConnell started selling Zims and advocating Zims to everybody in the fucking entire universe, go and buy Zims, go and buy fucking Iraqi dollars, I'm going to miss up, what the fuck? No. Dude, the whole Federal Reserve System, Bitcoin, Reset, Plow Schwab, <laughs> fuck off. It's all yeah. about them controlling you. And I say, Phil, I got kicked out of camp. So anyway, this air hostess was texting me two, three times a night saying, hey, Gobby, you know, I've got this amount of fucking wages left. Do I buy Zims or what do I buy? And I'm going, no, don't buy anything. Just like keep your money and just do what you're, you're doing to live, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, I just, it's like, anyway, I, I did buy some gold once when I lived in California for five years and I was earning enough to save a bit. And mm -hmm. I bought some gold and it did rise in price, but I cashed it out too soon. You know, and then I got offered Bitcoin in 2008 or nine for about $53 yeah. per, per coin. And Angela, I <laughs> Angela, again, 
this is a true story that I can bring witnesses to. I could have bought Bitcoin at 85 cents, okay? I could have, but I didn't. Do you know why I didn't? Because the minute electricity stops, Bitcoin... It's gone. Possible. I understand that. Yeah. I do understand that, yeah. but it's still, you know, it's still... I want to I want to be a little bit prepared for what's coming down the track, and even here already. You in already terms, have, listen. You live in Ireland. You can grow potatoes. You can go to the coast. You can get shellfish. You can get prawns. You can get lobsters. You can get crabs. You throw a rod into the sea. You'll feed yourself. You don't need fucking asda. You don't need fucking Tesco's. You're already well prepared. Yeah, cabbages, beetroot, tomatoes, dude. The Irish survived a potato farm, but actually they didn't because that was orchestrated by the state too. The yeah, no. And fucking potato. Yeah, exactly. Get them to fucking to America so they can go and build fucking railroads. And hey, if they're really clever, we can make them into Shire Reefs and fucking New York City and Tapanani and fucking what's a gang in New York? Well, well, that's the Irish. Really fucking useful because they're clever cunts, but they do as a whole really well. Do you know the word boycott comes from the whole fucking situation? Captain Boycott. Again, sorry guys, but you really need to know the history of this. These people have been fucking you up the ass in 1642. I know, I know, but the and the th the sad thing is that I've observed I moved back to Ireland, like my dad left when he was 19 and he didn't come back till he was 53, although we came every summer for holidays. But I moved back in 1996 and um I've noticed a shocking change is that since the Celtic tiger boom in the first half of the 2000s, all the people in leadership in Ireland, after the Irish were renowned for rebelling against invasion and um, 800 years of occupation and, and you know having their own language and being proud, when they got money, they just tried to be like the British and the globalists. They just started getting all giddy, having helicopters and, and trying to dress like not the Irish. Trying to, They lost their identity and they became something they weren't. And it's like, who are you? How, what happened to your identity? Why do you think that if you get some money, you have to learn how to look like the other elites? Do you know what I mean? It's an inferiority complex. The whole Irish thing, it started off with, uh, you remember the guy, the DeLorean, John DeLorean and his yeah. factory? That oh, yeah, yeah, the, the sports that, that, cars, yeah. That's the one, that was back in the late 70s. Yeah. Okay, after that, the American government, they just thought, hey, the Irish are stupid. Let's fucking give them a shed load of money. What are they going to do? Spend it on crap, which they did. And, and then Dennis O'Brien, Dennis O'Brien worked really closely with the Clintons yeah. and Haiti and uh, telephone. I was, just, I was, Angela, if you give me the opportunity, I was just going to say, do you know where the Clintons are lately? Well, I know they came with a plane full of cash and put it into Allied Irish Bank. They, millions they came and deposited. Ah, no, cash. Do you know what, Angela? Again, you see, God, God is good to me because once upon a time, I was up, I was painting a BY store, which had five tracks and the fucking K24 hours a day, which put our heads in. But we were painting a BY store. But anyway, in the hotel, he was a whole bunch of fucking Irish idiots that arrived. There was like a 20 of them. They were like on a fucking gangbang expedition because one of them was going to get married. And they all worked for the only Irish bank in Ireland, the only. Irish Bank in Ireland, and me and him, we got, well, we, we, as you do, we got into some serious fucking whiskey drinking and talking bollocks, and they explained a whole bunch of shit to me, but the Clintons currently, right, Swansea is twin with Wuhan, you know Wuhan, the fucking, the fucking pandemic, and guess who's on the board of Swansea University? Hillary, Hillary Clinton, Clinton. Yeah, Hillary Clinton. She sold out Ireland. They've all gone to Wales. You know why? Because Welsh used to make fucking Sony TV. Now they're making fucking chips for the 5G. Wow. She's on the head of a law uh, degree in Swansea. Yeah. And, and also they've set yeah. up a trolling academy in Swansea. Yeah. 
a troll. They teach people. Yeah, they teach people how to fuck people. How to troll. Yeah. And I've been, I've been noticing they've culled a lot of survivors, and they've, they've lured them into sort of wicker and watered down Satanism and this, that, and the other. And then they teach them to go and train how to report people. And they literally write, you need to report this to safeguarding, you need to report that to social welfare, you need to report that to Tusla or social services, you need to report this. They teach them, it's almost like, um, you know, in, rats. in Germany, where no, everybody... No, Angela, Angela, Pavlovian fucking rats. That's yeah. what it is. That's Pavlovian. where it comes from. That's what it fucking is. And it's, it's horrifying to see Welsh, survivors turning on each the other. Welsh, the Welsh went underground to dig the coal that fucking steamed the fucking ships that made the empire. The Welsh fucking dug the coal that powered the engines to blow up every motherfucker across the face of the earth. Woohoo! We're the British Empire. And guess who wins? <laughs> Elizabeth Mountbatten, Sax Goldberth. Well, take your pick of our names, but. That's and and back to that. Yeah. And yeah, and it's Hillary cool. Clinton as well. She she was visiting Kildare. Yeah. Um and uh, was, she was working Mountbatten. closely with the Catholic Church and well, visiting orphanages. Visiting Mountbatten was the biggest Mountbatten was the biggest drug smuggler on the face of planet Earth oh, via Her yeah. Majesty's Yacht Britannia. It didn't get searched by customs and excess anywhere. Yeah. East India. Yeah, yeah, East India yeah. Tea Company. Same thing. Girl. And yeah, and that's why Mountbatten. Well, some people say Mountbatten got blown up because he had a couple of eleven-year-old boys with him. Again, have you heard of a guy called Willie, uh, a Scottish MP that got blown up? He shot himself twice in the head and threw the gun fifty yards after he driven his car off. Willie McRae, nineteen seventy-four. He was Lord Louis Mountbatten's Batman. He was like his personal slave in India. And that's why he got killed. But don't go and Google it. But although there's a whole bunch of documentaries about it in the BBC TV, but don't go and Google it because it doesn't really matter. There's somebody really fighting to get access to Lord Mountbatten's letters. And this is connected to Wales as well because they paid millions to bring them to Wales. And then it might be Wales or it might be Southampton. Anyway, whichever council has them is refusing <laughs> to give access to them because there's you know, too much you know, too much. Do you know do you know who lord do you know who lord mountbatten's bastard child was the most famous one peter tell sellers. me peter sellers. Huh? Peter sellers. oh now he's another one i had an aversion to everybody yeah. loved the pink panther and i just had a little radar going off oh yeah. something's not right something's not that right was Mount, that was mountbatten's bastard same as jimmy sell was another royal batard bastard he used to call his mother the duchess do the maths on that one, guy. Jimmy Savile used to accost Diana Doors when she was fucking 15, 16 on a bike. Wow. Go and Google that. Dude, that's on the internet. I'm not making up. No, I, I, Diana I Doors, for, for a while, she was a, was she a madam? She was into some fairly dark parties. Angela, 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 Angela. All I'm going to say is I don't know if she was a madam or I don't know if she was a survivor because survivors... Have gone to some extreme fucking lengths to preserve them old selves. Yeah? yeah. And they've never ever sold their soul to the dark side, but they're just doing it because they fear for their Well, this is why a lot of prostitutes don't like to be called prostitutes because what they are is survivors trying to make it. Yeah. Yeah, trying exactly. to make it. Yeah, work, same, working it's, girls. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. You don't listen. God says in the Bible, judge not less to be judged. So yeah. don't be judged. Okay. And yeah. unless you know the true story, but the thing about Diana Doors, Peter Sellers, Len Fairclough on Coronation Street, right the way fucking through the hole. If you don't see the fucking links, then you never will. So yeah. guys, go out there, start researching, start reading, start studying, because they're all interlinked. Jimmy you... Savile, no, no, Martha. Uh, oh, sorry, Martha. Martha. Angela, Angela. I, I'm used to talking to Area 51. Angela, the second... Look at the body that was left outside Jimmy Savile's flat by the Yorkshire Ripper. Jimmy Savile was half the Yorkshire Ripper. Yeah, yeah, I do believe that. I do believe that. There you go. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Uh, but I saw quite a convincing theory once that he was actually uh, a child of Dennis Thatcher. There's an no, incredible... No, 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 no. Okay, that was a red herring. 
Yeah, his mother was a dog. Dennis, Dennis Thatcher couldn't wank off into a fishbowl. Careful now, let's keep this, <laughs> let's keep this oh, YouTube friendly. Yeah, you're right. oh, forgive me. No. Oh, forgive me. That's, that's not a libelous accusation. Mark Thatcher, good luck on your failed attempt to go over an African country because mommy fucking blew up the Volgano. Okay, him. okay. So who, who do you think is Jimmy Savile's father? I can't comment on that right here, right now. Okay, all right, okay. I don't want to get you in trouble. And um, I'm already in trouble. <laughs> so am I. Edward Heath uh, boat used to come and park in my village. How many yeah. fucking pedophile buddies used to come and... Anyway, do you remember anyway. the whole Shetland child abuse? Nah, that didn't happen either. No, they wouldn't talk about that. Yeah, they, they love their islands and their remote areas, of don't they? No yeah. TV, no TV, no telephones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had a telephone box in the middle of the village. It was, the yeah. lights were filled with earwigs, and every time we went to the earwigs, it would fall down. <laughs> your ears, so and let box. me just, I mean, we're going over sort of, you know, the things are changing so much every day, but so you think, uh, the, re, you think the real Greg Hallett was murdered? Yes. That, you're talking about the King of England. Completely but, not. No, 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 no. He was never the King of England. Okay. No, he wasn't. Yeah, the, but the original, uh, Greg, the original Greg Hallett, have you heard of Professor George Lees? Yes, I have. Okay. Professor George Lees will tell you the truth about Greg Haller. Greg Haller, original one, is not the one that is there today. Yeah, I heard there was a switch out. Yeah, yeah I did hear he's, that. Just, he's just like the fucking Muppet Show reincarnation of Kermit Part 2. And, and so is it the second pretend Greg Hallett? He's the one that tried to steal the story from the guy was it was in Portugal the guy that really did have um the bloodline yeah one yeah the, the, the original born bastard of uh what's his name uh, the butcher what the hell anyway anyway the, yeah the, 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 listen the fact of the matter is victoria had a baby when she was 14 <laughs> cancel that why because ah well the boss children are sex to you on mind nine times, of which they did, and that's the bank melon. The that's why the whole Canary Wharf is called Canary Wharf. That I know that doesn't make sense, but it does in levels with the satanic people again. Yeah, well, ha, ha 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 ha, and that's when they kill the guys on seven seven that came to tell the truth to the newspapers. They yeah, shot the four of them. Yeah, they shot them. <laughs> Dude, there are people texting out the office and saying, Hey, we just saw four guys killed. Yeah, no. That text couldn't go nowhere. Right, okay. So, so, so official story. Okay, <laughs> so the, uh, you think the real Greg Hallett was murdered? The real Greg no, Hallett... I don't know if he was murdered. He's not the same Greg Hallett. He sw uh, switched uh, out. They switched yeah. him out. Okay. Angela, listen, do you know why I can say that categorically? Because when I was in Milton Keynes, the guy that Greg Hallett was living with, he came up and spoke to me. I could have gone to visit Greg Hallett that night, the next day, the next I had I've got an open invitation to go and visit Greg Hallett. But you know what I'm not gonna do? I'm not gonna do it. Why? Because it's gonna compromise me because I don't believe it. Yeah, well, his family fairly comprehensively discredited him, saying he's he's lying. Now this might be Yeah, the but Angela, the thing is he's not lying about the Putins in South America and uh, South Africa, whatever it was, New Zealand. Yeah. He's not lying about that. He's not lying about the four Putins. He's not lying about Jacinda Ardern. He's not lying about the corruption. He's not lying about the people. Okay, so power. he had a lot of truth. He had a lot of yeah, truth. So he yeah, got switched he out. But that's what, Angela, is that not what the state apparatchiks do? Hey, I'm David Ike. I'm on Morgan. Here's a whole bunch of truth. And uh, you, can, you, you know what I'm saying, yeah? They push out Alex Jones. Here's 90% truth, but here's 10% bullshit, and you're going to buy the bullshit because you're going to buy like fucking safe water, you're going to buy ammo, you're going to buy fucking storage, you're going to buy fucking kits, you're going to buy machine guns. Yeah, and then they've just got to get compromised. Yeah. Like Alex Jones is yeah. just the shadow of what he used to be, is just a joke. His dad is so 30, compromised. His dad was a 30 degree Mason. Alex Jones, no, sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, um, I, Right, it's a stupid question, but I'll ask uh, it anyway. And there is a way to ask this. Are you a master mason? 
I'm more than a master mason. I know the degrees above the degrees that even the degrees don't know. Royal Arch, Royal York, trust me. You know what, Angela? Let me tell you a story, right? I was 16 and a half, right? I'm from the Outer Hebrides, a little town called Stornoway. I'm a carpet footer. The boss says, right, listen, guys, you've got to go and fit a carpet in the Masonic Lodge. It's just like two streets along. But the guy that ran our shop, he had a saddle because he had been part of the Chisholm, do you know the Chisholm Trail in America? Doolin, Doolin, Dalton, yeah. He'd been there, made his money, come home and started three like luxury fucking furniture and carpet shops and shit like that. So anyway, we go to the Masonic Hall. We've got this room, it's called the Tyler Room, the initiation room. It's like 20 foot by 10 foot. It took us three days. It should have taken us 20 minutes, but yeah, we had access to the library. So we were sitting there reading the books and just banging the hammer on the floor occasionally. So that's what I learned about the Masons. So, but you're not, uncle, you're not a Freemason. You just no, know a lot. I know a lot. I'm not yeah. one. My, my uncle was one. Most of my uncles were one. My grandfather was probably one, but I'm not. Because I think I, George I, Lees is. I think George Lees is. You better believe it. I yeah. was blackballed. I was blackballed. I well, was that's... invited. I was. I was invited to a lodge by the guy. I, I was invited to the lodge by my next door neighbor who was in Highlander. Remember the movie Highlander? Who was? Anyway, I was invited to the Inverness Lodge. I met Russell Johnson. I was there in a white tie and bow tails. I worked for the Highland News Group, which I did four promotions in a month, two company cars. I was rubbing shoulders with the big knobs, but guess what? I didn't sing their tune. No, and that's probably a good thing. We've probably been spared a few... A yeah, because um... I was just a drunk, inconsistent Scottish cunt that says I ain't fucking buying anything you're selling me. Yeah. I believe in what I believe in, and it ain't what you're fucking selling me. And I heard recently that... Um, I don't know how true it is, but it sounded plausible. Um, there's a guy that's sort of a UFO. I'm not into that stuff. Um there's a guy that's a UFO guy, and he says that he and Simon Parks were offered a job with um, the CIA with a quarter of a million dollars a year each. And he said he declined, but Simon Parks said, yes, please, and went ahead. Well, of course, Simon Parks obviously wants to go on a lot of sex for fucking alien women. And, and, women. and not just alien women, apparently, or allegedly. Oh. There's plenty of women that have felt very violated. Oh. Yeah. Very, even if you call it on I, the astral, you know. I don't do that. Listen, yeah. Angela, can I tell you a story about UFOs? And I just told this story last night to somebody that I really love. I've seen three UFOs in my life once when I was five, once when I was 13, and once a few times later. The second one is the most important one. I was standing on a road between two locks, right? Flat horizon to the fucking east, flat horizon to the west. I saw this fucking silver thing flying across. It took 22 seconds. The Blackbird SR fucking 71 couldn't do that. And do you know how I knew that? Because my dad was a radar operator. Yeah. Guided by Watson Watt. He'd come to the storm away the Outer Hebrides in 1959. He'd met my mother who worked as an athlete. She was a fucking awesome cook. Language, yes, language. Oh, language. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. YouTube. We like YouTube so much, we actually <laughs> fucking think she's part no, of language, language. Okay, <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, long story short, my dad was a radar operator. He had a choice, go to Hong Kong, go to Stornoway. He came to Stornoway, he met my mother. Anyway, he was a radar operator in 19 fucking 50, sorry, in 19 something something six. He was sitting with his mate at a screen, two screens, beep, 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 beep. And all of a sudden, <laughs> This thing happened, it arrived at 3,000 miles plus, it stopped 150 feet above the top of the ocean. They thought, what? There's the Russians! They scrambled jets from Lossy Mouth. The jets from Lossy Mouth had been halfway there at supersonic speed before this thing just like shot up, like supersonic speed straight back up in the sky. So, yeah. That's all of the, Angela, I shit you not. I'm not lying to you, I wouldn't make this show. No, no, I, I believe you. It, ah. it, I believe you. I, I, 
it's not a field I want to go into. Like somebody once said to me a few years ago. Yeah, but Angela, let me finish. Let me, me finish. Yes, like, yes. Let me just finish. You're right. I remember someone saying to me, "Where you know, what's your position on flat Earth?" And I said, "I don't care because <laughs> it's like it's not figuring for me. I'm not lying awake at night, you know, trying to figure that out. I'd be trying to figure other things out. But uh, with the I am a student and a scholar of the Bible, and I have been since Amen. 1990. Amen. Ezekiel, Ezekiel went to heaven in a fiery chariot. Now there's a story. Yeah, I know, I know. And I know there's been time travel in the Bible. You'd get translated from <laughs> one place to another or whatever. I know. And I also was warned that one of the deceptions in the last days would be the alien deception. Yeah. And I Absolutely. also know, let me just finish, yes, yeah. the Freemasons uh, uh, and, um, you know, Luciferians, whatever you want to call it, Jane are is. great students of the Bible and uh, particularly the book of Revelation and Daniel and Joel. They the study they end times and it seems to me they try and imitate um, end time prophecies to make Angela. it their own. Angela. The Bible is the only book of shit that they've got to go on. They need to destroy and take down the two golden arches. They need you to believe that this is going to happen. World War Four, Sticks and Stones, Alistair Pike, Alistair Crowley, because that's the shit that they've been written 400 years ago. Unfortunately, it's not God's plan. Okay. Yeah. The alien thing, here's what I am on aliens, okay? I've seen shit that I can't explain, but until some big slimy grey thing comes up and sticks a big, huge, shiny silver thing up on my ass, I'm going to go, uh, uh, no, carry yeah, on. Yeah, I, I, I've, been, I've been looking a lot at the, because I do see in the Bible about the Nephilim, the fallen angels, and came down, made it women. Listen, Angela, it's not even in the Bible, it's in the Quran too. I wish you'd come to the I know, I know, and I have a great so heart. YouTube. I studied, I, I knew, I dated to two or three Muslims in my 20s and I, uh -huh. and I studied the Quran. Well, I didn't know. I can't really say I studied it, but I, I was around Muslims for a while. And I oh, have a right. real heart. I have a real heart for when, when Abraham was told by his wife, I need you to cast out my servant girl and Ishmael. I need you to get them to exile because it's upsetting me. And it broke Abraham's heart because Ishmael was still his flesh and blood, even though he'd gone ahead with the servant woman, the bond woman and, and conceived her. But he, when he took, when he said to Haggai and Ishmael, you have to go, he cried out to God and he said, will you promise me this? Don't forget them in your, in my inheritance. And God made a promise and Ishmael was the head of the Arabs, the, you know, the founding of the Arab nations and was referred to as an angry Ooh, young man. And, and God said, I won't forget them in the, in the last, you know, in the last days, I won't forget them. I know you love your son and I know it's hurting you to cast him out. So I find that the Muslim, even though there's theories that the Vatican created Islam and yeah, this, yeah, that, yeah, 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 of course. But, but I do I find that they, they, they will come back to not just the bosom of Abraham, but to the full knowledge of Yeshua, not as the Mahdi, but as really uh, Jesus, uh, you know. No. But what, you're thing, saying, what you're saying about Abraham, Abraham is the father of all religions. Yeah, a father of all yeah. nations. I know exactly. that, including right. the Arab nations okay. so and the I'm Jewish that. nation. Yeah. Oh, for the love of God. Wait, woman, here we go. <laughs> this is something so simple. I would just like to do it Johnny Ball style or more. Read. Read in the name of your Lord that created you. Read and your Lord teaches by means of the pen, teaches man that which he knew not. That's 19 words, okay? The second verse revealed, Surah 68, Al Khalam, the pen. Go read that shit in the order it was revealed. <laughs> A whole new world opens up. And yep. it ties it, it, dude, it ties in with the fucking King James Bible, 1611, 16. They took about nine chapters out of the 1642 version. The 911 one is the one that they all swear they're fucking up to because they're bar registered members and they're Satanists and a whole bunch of so. trying to hijack it. But the point the thing I wanted to ask you, uh -huh. and I know that I know that many books were taken out. I have studied this a lot. It's been a passion. 
Um, but the thing I wanted to ask you, right, so let me finish, even though I might frustrate you. The thing I wanted to ask you is if the Nephilim did, you know, if fallen angels came and forcibly mated with women and mm -hmm. um, the giants in the land of yeah, and then and then Genesis. and then there was the flood, but then they reappeared and um and it does say in the Bible that the the fallen angels were locked up by God yeah. until the last days. No. So, so wait a minute. Do you give any credibility to the theory that they're in Antarctica and they're, that, you know, they will be released soon? No, I don't. Because basically what happened, when the Jews got taken by the rivers of Babylon. I love want, that song. Yeah, me too. Anyway, they took the Jews back to Babylon and God released two angels called Harut and Marut, okay? Don't go clicking Googling them or do any satanic shit with them by Alistair Crowley and just don't be involved with any of that, guys, because it's real, it's true, and you just don't wax any bag money. Anyway, Harut and Marut came and they taught the Israelis how to be fucking stupid, and that's what's happened today, okay? Careful, keep it YouTube friendly. Yes, they are. Sorry, when I say the Israelis, I'm talking about every single Jew across the face of the earth. And you know what, Angela? I'm a Jew. I am a child of Israel. I yeah. am a child of Israel. Yeah, so we're Israelites. We are Israelites. Yeah. yeah. Without that's being Jewish. Word, that's, yeah. that's what the word Pax Britannica means, yeah? The yeah. keepers of the covenant. We are the keepers of the covenant. Not these bunch of fucking Ashkenazi fucking dick. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Part okay. The UN, I just want to keep yeah, YouTube have been no, good to me. Yeah. They took down my main channel. Absolutely it was getting no, too powerful, but this, this one is, is what, okay. So yeah, I'm going to keep this, it okay. This is this is what happens every time I open my mouth because I tell too much truth. And I know, and I have too, and I still do. But I've learned a little bit, just uh, not to personalize the rage. You know, there's no because rage. no, I know, there's but no you know, rage. when we say things I'm like, a, "Dude, I'm a child of Israel." I yeah. am more of a child, I, dude. I'm more of a child of Israel than Benjamin Netanyahu. Hello. I know. Maybe I know. Uh, yeah. And probably because the most. We are the innocents, yeah. We're not the ones who want to go and capitalize and kill people for gold. I know. I know. I know. Us. I know. That's it's, not us. It's heartbreaking what's yeah. going on. We're um, the people of the covenant. 1603. I, Listen, James first created the word Britannicus on the 1603 coin. Okay. Pax Britannicus, the keepers of the covenant. We are the keepers of the covenant. And you see, the thing is, you know what? Again, Angela, there are like, I could introduce you to 20,000 people tonight that believe that Edinburgh was Jerusalem and that Arthur. Anyway, you get me? Because all of history is a lie. And it is. We've all been led to believe. Yeah, 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 it happened over in some sandy far away affair. Okay, well, it's cool than up that island. Well, I try and keep it simple, and I, and we'll finish this one for now. But the, I try, there's two things I want to just end with from Scripture. And uh -huh. one is where I'm at at the moment, because the more you find out, you realize the less you know. So where I'm at at the moment is like Job. I just know my Redeemer lives. His name is Yeshua. He's Jesus. You know, he's the Son of God. And the second thing I wanted to say, whether we don't need to argue about, you know, Arab or, I, Jew or Christian, but let me no, just no, finish with this yeah. last one. Uh -huh. I do believe that, that the scripture that says no one comes, I'm the way, the truth and the life, says Jesus. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. And I do believe that. So it doesn't matter what your DNA is or your or your history, heritage, whatever uh -huh. it is, there's only one. There's only one one way back to the Creator Father, which I believe is Jesus. And that could get me. Believe. That could that could impact my YouTube channel more than any f's and blinding that you did. I do not disagree with anything that you say, but I would like to point this out to anybody out there that's got a brain and a mind to search, look. And Google. Do you remember the story of Jonah, the guy that got eaten by the fish? Yeah. Okay. Imagine this, right? In the Mediterranean, at certain times of the year, there are three stars that disappear before the, the horizon, you know, because everything goes south and the stars disappear. 
that is what's known as Jonah being in the belly of the whale. So if you guys can actually go with, wait a minute, the guy wasn't figured to be eaten by a whale. It's just that they were lost. They thought, uh -uh, we're going to throw this guy over the side and he got washed ashore and went in the way. Okay. So that explains the whole Moby Dick and, you know, I love everybody. Moby Dick. I yeah, love Moby I Dick. Know, but everybody wants to see miracles. With the, but the, the thing, through. the thing that impressed because I studied, I went to university to do English and theatre, and then I got persuaded to drop theatre and do American literature as my second subject. Mm. And of course, Moby Dick was one of them. But the, I wrote a whole uh, essay. I wrote Angela, Angela, Angela. Can I just mess your head up completely and absolutely? Do you know the guy that wrote Moby Dick? He was the guy that signed Herman Melville. He was the guy that signed the death warrant for Bully the Kid. Oh no, that's you that that's story. fine. I know because like loads of people turn out to be Freemasons and not Christians and all that. I yeah. know history is a lie. But the thing that impressed me and for me it encapsulated a lot of what it what is in the American psyche was the, the deck hand, I think his name was Pip, fell overboard. And, and he was lost at sea for about 10 days. And by some miracle, they were able to rescue him. Now, bear in mind, this is a novel. But when he, he was so traumatized by being lost at sea and the vastness of it, that when they rescued him, he never spoke again. He was mute for the rest of his life. And that just, that, that, that to me is the ultimate picture of alienation, that if we lose our bearings, and there's nothing to see, and you don't know if you're ever going to get rescued. It can render you mute. It can render. It can just. It can snap the mind. You know. I just. I love that. To me. And then Jonah, when I was at a, a Jesuit-influenced convent school in Bath, um, we did a musical called the Jonah Man Jazz, and I was Jonah in that, and it was fabulous. It was a jazz musical. And um, if I hadn't lost my voice, I would sing it to finish up this. Uh, <laughs> to finish up this. Look, may, may, maybe next time. Yeah, I used to sing jazz and blues in London. Yeah, I loved it. And in Spain. Oh, dude. And in Spain. But, but you're right. Let's just save this for the next show. But yeah, OK, we'll yeah, do this going, again. Going back to good math, well, OK. Let's okay go on, you finish it up. Go on, don't no, let no. me jump. Go ahead. Jonah, wait. Jonah got sent to a town called Nineveh. Nineveh is in northern Iraq, and George Bush is shit blowing that shit up. So anyway, you're right. Moving swiftly onwards, to take this back to today, nothing is as it seems. Don't believe anything you read. Please go and learn and research for yourself. It's like I used to say in Able Danger, don't believe a word that I tell you. Yeah. Go and, yeah, go and Google it for yourself. But at Come some point, and yeah. tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. But at some point, you can be so full of knowledge that your head's going to explode. And I think we also have to just start trusting the Holy Spirit as well more and more. You know, because if I'd, if I'd listened, I'm just looking back, I'm not having regrets, but I had red flags with many, many people. I think almost every mm. adult sent into my life was sent in in some way. And I had red flags and I ignored them. So I think as well as... As well as gaining more knowledge, people need to get closer to God and, and you know, listen to the Holy Spirit within. All right, listen, it was great, Gordon. We'll do this again. Yeah, and next time, can we talk about Oakstead? Because I used to live in the Finstley Hotel, like 250 yards away from Vanessa Phelps. Oh, oh my goodness, bunch. please, let's talk about yeah. Oakstead next Dude, time. I used, okay. to, I, used to drink in a, I used to drink in the cafes with, like, a whole bunch of famous people. Okay. West End Lane. Okay. So, Angela... As always, it's been an absolute delight and a pleasure. And girl, you're doing a good job, inshallah, which means God willing. I know what it means, inshallah. Anakela maravilla. Shreya, shreya, anakela maravilla. Do you know what's even scarier than that, right? Gaelic is old in Arabic, and I can... Anyway, a Gaelic girl, I can be... Women, delight and a pleasure as always. God go with him, peace be. All right, God bless. Talk to you soon. Darling.